I don't bring up the word snow lightly. It is a bell you cannot unring in the south. I'm telling you that as a southerner and a meteorologist, but it has been the biggest weather topic. And while there is a midweek window I need you to watch and keep a close eye on, it may not give you the winter wonderland you're hoping for. It's not true for everyone. We can still see snow in some spots. What is almost guaranteed for everyone is rounds of Arctic air, and that's impactful. So here's the big picture and what you need to know. There's a system that's going to drop out of Canada, and as it does, it digs across the south, and it helps pull in a really cold Arctic air. The first one coming in Wednesday into Thursday continues on. Another one even deeper Friday night into Saturday and Sunday. I want you to see how these temperatures play out too. So this is showing Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday. It's so cold. As much as I know a lot of people want snow, this week is primarily going to be a cold story. Still very impactful. And I'm also not saying snow is impossible. I'm just saying this is more likely what you're going to see. For the most part, Wednesday, Thursday, and this weekend is going to be a cold story event. Temperatures drop really late Wednesday into Thursday morning, and that makes it feel a lot more like winter compared to what we saw today. That cold air that's moving in is why a wintry mix is even part of the conversation to begin with. But this is especially true for those in elevated areas. So winds are gonna pick up as we go into midweek, especially by Wednesday. Rain begins Wednesday morning into the afternoon, so we're still seeing rain extending from Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way down to the Gulf states, and it continues as rain. This is the issue the South typically has. Cold air is not usually in place. Cold air is usually chasing moisture, which is not the pattern you need if you want that big snow event. It has to be cold before the moisture arrives. And that's just the issue we usually face. And here, if any of the Atlantic states, you usually need cold air damming to set up, again, an event where cold air is there before the moisture arrives. And that's just really hard to do. So there is still snow chances, more so for those in the Tennessee Plateau, which is the eastern tier of Middle Tennessee, over into the Appalachian Mountains. And that's more so true for North Carolina and Virginia, and then portions of Kentucky into West Virginia. That's going to be the best chance for snow. So I showed you how cold it was going to get. We're talking temperatures later into this week, falling into the low to mid 20s for overnight lows. That's plenty cold for snow. It's just by the time it arrives, moisture is already gone. I need to scoot myself out of the way. Right now, accumulating snow does not look likely for most locations unless you're in an elevated area. For many, Wednesday and Thursday is going to be a very cold rain event, which is my least favorite thing we could possibly get. Maybe a brief mix, but what's dangerous about this is what's coming behind it. So this graphic, I love, it shows the probability of snow an inch or greater. The red that you see going up into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, that's a really solid chance. The rest of us, mm, not so much. Easy to see it being possible across the Appalachian Mountains, even into that middle bluish color for the plateau of Tennessee, up into portions of central Kentucky. Overall, trends are a lot lower than they were a couple of days ago. But you gotta hear me out. Even if you are not expecting snow from this system, there's a really, really good chance this will still be impactful to you. Whether you're in the Gulf states, northern Florida, the Carolinas, mid-south, that's the area I'm still watching, and here's why. So rain likely moving through as we head into midweek. That's true for the mid-south, for the Carolinas, for the Gulf states, for portions of Florida. The cold air follows behind it. Why I still think this is going to be an impactful event and why schools could be delayed Thursday morning, refreeze. There is potential for refreeze Thursday morning because of how cold it's going to be, and that can make travel conditions dangerous. Also, some school districts, just based off of cold weather, will also delay, so kids aren't standing out at the bus stop. And there's a good chance it's going to be that cold. We'll also look at wind chills. And it could be cold enough to delay schools. I absolutely think so. Temperatures falling into the low 20s, teens for some, and that's not counting the wind chill. Here's why I still think we could see delays Thursday, snow or not. Again, this depends on your district, but as someone who grew up in the South, sometimes they would delay school if it was cold enough outside. This is wind chills as we go into Thursday morning. So for some areas like you see in Virginia, the eastern part of Tennessee, portions of Kentucky, single digit wind chills. It'll feel like the teens for so many of us. So areas that are only dealing with rain Wednesday and Wednesday overnight could still see mixing and could definitely see refreeze overpasses, bridges, and those back rural roads that you just know freeze. This is what it's going to feel like Thursday morning. And look at how far down that reaches. The panhandle of Florida is going to feel like 31 degrees. That's some strong air. So to sum up our first round, Wednesday and Thursday, I wouldn't completely write off. Do I think you need to go buy sleds and bread and milk and hit up the Piggly Wiggly and the food line? No, I don't. 
It could still be impactful. It could still impact schools because of how cold it's going to be and because of refreeze concerns. Depends on the school district. Again, I'm speaking as someone who's born and raised in Central North Carolina. And when it was cold enough, they would delay school. The best chance at seeing accumulating snow, we're talking roughly an inch, would be across the Appalachian Mountains where Tennessee and North Carolina are holding hands up into Kentucky, Virginia, and West Virginia. I'm not focusing on New England. Never been. Never lived. And y'all know I love the South. So that's my, that's my summary for Wednesday and Thursday for the South. Now, because I love you and because we're best friends, I'm going to show you what's down the line. I don't love doing that when it comes to snow, but I think it's worth watching because I'm just trying to stay ahead of some of that hype. So we're moving and grooving, right? This is Thursday. All of those very dark blue lines, you can easily guess Arctic air that just digs in. So we've got the cold air in place. That's interesting. We go into Friday and you can see some moisture. She's knocking at the door. She's close. More cold air fills in. This is Friday night to Saturday. There's a little bit of snow, just a little, just a quick smooch as she passes by. Some models have been very extreme with this. Some runs of this model, this is GFS. Some runs of the GFS have been very extreme, bringing snow chances all the way down to Alabama, Mississippi. Am I feeling that? No. So expect more Arctic air to slide in to the south this weekend. And this is trending even colder than what we're expecting Wednesday and Thursday. But just like midweek, this is trending to be more of a cold snap than it is a big snow event. That said, winter weather can't be entirely ruled out, but we are not getting ahead of ourselves. We are not trusting graphics that have inches on them. Girl, no, it's too far out. What we can do now is watch the pattern and see if this sets up for a potential wintry mix. Because could snow happen? Sure. I think so. And is it worth watching? Yeah, definitely. Even just for the cold aspect alone of how deep that cold air is going to sink? Yes. Fall on iguanas alert, but it's not a slam dunk because it's too far, but it's a fun one. It's a fun one to watch. But this weekend is trending even cooler than the first batch. We're talking teens now for lows. This isn't wind chills. This is temperatures. It's very cold, even for January. So let's sum it all up because that's a lot of information. We had a brief warm up today, but midweek brings a very sharp Arctic blast back all across the south, all the way down to Florida. This makes it feel a lot more like winter, especially in those higher elevations. It's going to be even cooler. Light snow accumulation is possible for those in elevated areas like the Tennessee Plateau, like the Appalachian Mountains. Still not a big snow event, probably about an inch. For most of us, this is going to be a very cold weather event and it's going to be wet. So my concern with that is going to be refreeze early Thursday morning paired with just some really cold temperatures and wind chills down into the upper teens. And that could be enough to delay school depending on your district. So keep an eye out for slick spots and those potential school delays Thursday morning. Looking ahead to the weekend, another surge of cold air is coming and it's going to be colder than what we're expecting midweek. Could this second surge of cold air bring snow? Yeah, it could, but it's just too far out to nail down any details because these models cannot make up their minds. It's too far out for snow. So right now at this point for the weekend setup, we're just going to keep an eye on the pattern. We're going to see if it stays favorable and we're going to stay updated as it gets closer to the event. If you want to stay ahead of these cold snaps and wintry surprises, please feel free to like and subscribe. I love breaking down the forecasts. I love cutting through the hype and just talking about the weather. It's great. I hope that you stay warm and you stay safe this week. And I hope this helped clear up some questions. As always, if you have any more, let me know. We'll talk about them. I'm trying to do somewhat daily forecasts, but we'll see. I'll see you in the next update. Love you later. Bye.